Eider Gud Jonsson, absolute pleasure to have you here this afternoon. Your homeland, Iceland, has talent in spades, Falls, at this moment in time, reaching a World Cup final. I'm from Scotland, as you can tell from the accent. What is your secret? What are Iceland doing that other small nations are just not doing? What this Iceland team has, it is pure passion. Uh, it is pure togetherness. Uh, there's a group of players, there's a, there's a generation now that have been together for a long time. We, we were fortunate to have had the experience of going to the Euros. And it's the same team. And it's just gotten stronger. When they come to play for Iceland, they are different players. They turn into Vikings as soon as the, the shirt goes on. The scale of the respective achievements, reaching the quarterfinals of Euro 2016 and qualifying for the first ever World Cup finals for Iceland. Yeah. For you and for the country actually, and the reaction back home in Reykjavik, what's been the bigger achievement? If you think about it right, we're 330 odd thousand people. So half of them are women, and then you get the age group. So we might have, if you narrow it down, we might have 100, 100 professional footballers to pick from. And that's where we make our national team. So if you, if you look at it that way, it's already an amazing achievement that we can put a team together, let alone do what we're doing. So, Euros were amazing, but the best thing about this team as well, we look back now, we had a great time, Euros unbelievable, we, we, I think we represented our country immaculately, I think our fans were amazing, uh, I think our fans spread to Europe what it is to go to a game, no trouble, just have fun, enjoy being there and that's it, and that's what football should be about. I've got to ask as well, either we caught up with a former former teammate of yours, Deco, he was over here a couple of weeks ago and one of the one of the few like yourself to have played both under Jose and under Pep. Yeah. Go to ask what that was like, the, the two the, the two opposites in many respects and, and who did you enjoy playing under? Uh, I think Mourinho and Guardiola are two of the best managers around. They are on a different level with a handful of other managers in history. Uh, you know, you talk about Alex Ferguson and Capellos and all those, put them in that bracket. But in modern day football, they are the best too. Easy as. I think they're both quite demanding. Mourinho would ask maybe a little bit more. He would, he would demand a little bit more from the team. Jose is a bit more of a character. And if it's not going right, you will know. <laughs> With Pep, he's a little bit easier, easier, a little bit more suave, but he's a, a genius as in analyzing the game see how you want to play. Their biggest strength, both of them, is to get the team to realise what he wants from them. And as soon as the team clocks on, as we see with Manchester City this season, that's when you see that is Guardiola football and they look sexy. <laughs> in terms of the Chelsea team you played under Jose and the, the Barcelona team you played under Pep, two dominant sides, which one felt more, I don't know, which one did you feel more that you would go out and you would beat anyone put in front of you? Which team were you more confident in putting on those, those colours? Well, it was a very similar feeling. That Chelsea team, we never won the Champions League, so it's, it's difficult to say we were unbeatable because apparently we were. But it was a similar feeling walking on the pitch as in you just feel untouchable. The Barcelona team, there's one edge. We had Messi. So how can you not walk on the pitch and feel like we'll be okay, we've got Messi on our team, so. Ider, talk to us about Messi. You've had kids here looking up to you today. Was there a case that players, professionals, when he got the ball, you're almost looking up to him because he's an absolute genius? When I came to Barcelona, I thought, you know, I was at Chelsea, I thought the pressure at Chelsea was a lot. It's a different, it's a whole different world. But when you walk in that dressing room, you realize, okay, I see Ronaldinho, I see Messi, I see Deco, I see this kid. And I honestly, I realised then, I will never, I'll never reach that level. I can run and train as hard as I can. I don't have that talent because they are just on a different level. And Messi is just one level above that. Chelsea, former club, a weird, weird vibe from that football club at this moment in time. The, it just looks as if something's not quite right. Is that a vibe that you... Yeah. Strange summer. I'm one of those that, that will go, how on earth did we sell Matic to Manchester United? We'll never understand it. Uh, indifferent start. 
Morata has been better than what I expected or, or settled in quicker than what I expected. And it's great to have Hazard back. I think he could be the one, he's the new signing, if you, uh, if you like, to give the boost that, w that was needed. Um, I still think they will be pushing whether they can win the league. I think the next couple of months will, will tell a big story. And is our final one is Antonio Conte. We know the, the culture at Chelsea in terms of the managerial <coughs> merry-go-rounds. Is he under pressure now, even though he's obviously uh, won the title? And I think in any case, any season, a Chelsea manager will be under pressure. To say that Conte as such is under pressure, I don't think so. This year, I actually think people expected it to be a difficult season because you've got the two Man Manchester teams looking quite good or very strong. But I still think Chelsea will be there or thereabouts. Um, whether they will win it, we'll, we'll see at the end.